Hi everybody, it's Emma here, aka Raneth de la Mort, and today we're going to be continuing our Let's Play of Vampire. We're now on episode 10, and thank you so, so much for all the support that's been shown on all the previous episodes. It really, really makes my day to see the likes going up and the view count, and also your comments. They really do make my day, so thank you so much if you have been following through till now so uh let's get started shall we okay so we're back here in uh, nurse dorothy crane's uh dispensary in the last episode we spoke to her and also i dropped some information about a potential link to a real life nurse at the time and the character of dorothy so if you haven't seen that episode then i do recommend you pop back and have a look at that we also uh, attended Mary's funeral, our sister's funeral, um, and now we're going to head back to uh, the Pembroke, really, and just go and see what Edgar has to say. We'll also uh, speak with Lady Ashbury again, because she also attended after our mother and butler left. He came to see us just to make sure that we were okay and that, you know, just how to have a friendly face. And I appreciated that. I think that was a really nice touch. We also did um, die in the last episode. Uh, we, well, I was an idiot and I walked into a situation with lots of scowls and ended up, um, yeah, getting mullered. So we're gonna have to fight our way back to the Pembroke. So yes, we're gonna just uh, fight our way back, which is not a problem because it's all XP and you know it's nice to have. Oh yeah, let's just just go clear out some stuff because I like to be able to move around a bit. Oh no, nightmare. Where the hell did you come from? Oh, no, 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 no. Definitely not. Thank you. Oh, 
was close. Idiot. So normally that guy, uh, the werewolf, he's usually around here, but he must have decided he wanted to join the party. Remember this? We will be coming back to it at a later date. It's one of our shortcut routes, which will save us some time later. Um... Yeah, let's just go back up now. He doesn't look much like a scowl. He looks... He looks pretty normal. He has like fancy shoes and stuff. There we go, we're in a much better position now. He has horns, guys. He has horns. Fear be God. I would harm no child of my making. This is your doing. You made me. Made me this creature. What are you? Hmm. See now, for me, he's not speaking in riddles. He's not clear, but they're not riddles. He's called us a champion, so he has a meaning and a reason for choosing us. So, why? You selected me. Chose me. As shall my children yet to come. 
What is it you seek? This age is sickly. An ancient poison, an older rage, brewed in a cauldron newly forged. This has something to do with the epidemic. Seek truth, my champion. Defeat the serpent of knowing with iron spur. Mm, okay, so that was a little bit more I've riddly. Had enough of others making decisions for me, pretending to know how I should feel or behave. Yeah. So the vampire oh. who made me is some sort of disembodied entity. Or was he just projecting this vision in my mind? <sighs> maybe Edgar can help me with this one. Yeah, maybe, but uh, I think Elizabeth or Lady Ashbury might be the best bet on that one. And if you didn't know in like a few episodes ago, we spoke to Lady Ashbury and she told us her full name, which is Elizabeth Samantha Mary, uh, Ashbury or Englewood. She did tell us that. Um, so, yeah, no spoilers there because she told it. She told us, she even told us she has a daughter. So, I'm not spoiling anything. Um, yeah, so what I was going to say there is that um, in Welsh mythology, there is actually. Um, a horned man mentioned um i'm not going to say what his name is just in case i don't want to be spoilery um but that's interesting because then we've got like multiple links to wales um already we've got the swans we've got the pembroke potentially this horned man i'm really interested i want to know what's going on so yeah, let's go try and find out what's happening. Um, yeah, let's go this way. I was just thinking which way I wanted to go and whether I wanted to speak to Lady Ashbury first or whether I wanted to speak to Edgar. I think I think we'll speak to Edgar first. Who is he talking to? Oh, I'm just going to stand here and listen to this. I don't know whether you guys can hear it. He just called Edgar a traitor. God protect us. You've got a leech in the hospital. Uh, yes, my hospital. My mission is to heal while you go about warring. You've set the table for a snake. I wonder why there's venom in your food. I'm growing tired of your song. You're a woodsman, McCallum, not a doctor. Return to your hunt. Remember, I've a good nose for machinations. I can flare the scent at a mile. You can't hide from the god. Leave him, Jonathan. This is sacred ground. Neutral territory. And I just had the carpet cleaned. Well, 
By the sacred stole, this is very bad news. Bad news indeed. Okay, so that was interesting. Um, there was lots of like back and forth between those two. Um, and I'm a bit weary of that guy because he's obviously something to do with pre one, but we're going to find out what's going on now. We're going to go speak to Edgar, but I'm concerned that he called him a traitor. What has Edgar got done to be called a traitor that we don't know about? What happened? The hospital has been attacked. We have injured patients, at least one dead and several missing. This has spiraled out of control. Even the most infirm are asking to be allowed to return home. Hmm. We have to restore confidence. We cannot have the people lose faith in this institution. This hospital is their only hope. Of course, you're right. But we cannot afford a public scandal. It would ruin us. We must restore order and quickly. You mentioned a dead patient. Who is he? She, Jonathan. She was Miss Harriet Jones. I found her room like a slaughterhouse. Blood everywhere. The duty nurse is taking care of the mess. I'll help him. Obviously, it's our home. It's our hospital. We have to protect the Pembroke. Very well. I'll help you. I know this place means something to you. I have noticed how you suppress your appetite when around the staff and patients. You need to know you can trust me, Edgar. I do, dear fellow, I do. Please then, tell me. Sean Hampton, the man we thought we'd saved at the docks. It seems he was infected after all. So Hampton became more beast than man. Exactly. The now guard of Prewen suspects the hospital of vampire activity. Do you realize what that could mean for us? Do you really believe they would come for us here, in such a public venue? McCullum is a fanatic. The guard will stop at nothing. You, you don't know what they're capable of, Jonathan. Very well. Since I brought Mr. Hampton here, I will put an end to this. I'm going to speak to Edgar again, so let's do that. If you don't mind, I have a few questions. Well, I'd be delighted to help you if I'm able. Who was that man in your office? Jeffrey McCullum, actual leader of the Guard of Prewen. I suspect he's the man behind the rebirth of this old and dusty society. What do they hope to achieve? Their ultimate goal is the eradication of all vampires in the country. They see you as a threat to mankind, Jonathan. They know I'm here now, don't they? I can guarantee one thing. The guard of Prewen would never dare to attack the hospital while I'm in charge here. What exactly happened here while I was absent? Hampton turned, quite violently as it happened, lurking about, attacked Miss Jones. To say he created quite a commotion would be an understatement. Are you sure it was Hampton that killed Miss Jones? Well, there was blood everywhere, but no body. And you know the state she was in? I fear for what he did with her. Hopefully, he just hid the corpse. How did the guard of Prewen come to hear of this? McCullum has spies everywhere. He will jump at any opportunity to disparage the Brotherhood and show his contempt. I just recently met the strangest creature in Whitechapel. He was immense. He mocked me and accused me of hypocrisy. Perhaps it was a skull. London's streets are overflowing with them these days. He was observing me with the obvious intent to do me harm. His very presence evoked a palpable sense of menace. You need to be careful, Jonathan. We've no idea what this creature really is. It was a vampire, all right. 
but what kind, I'm not sure. He was large and very fast. If you find anything more about this creature, the Brotherhood would greatly appreciate any information you could spare. I recently tried to enter a church. It has been a very unpleasant experience. The Brotherhood's research on the matter of faith and vampirism has proved somewhat insubstantial, to say the least. Is this proof that I'm cursed in the eyes of the Divine? The wrath of the Almighty? There's no way of knowing. It could be subconscious guilt, or irrational fear, or deep-seated beliefs. It's hard to explain in terms of science, that's for sure. I'm sure Lady Ashbury will have far greater insight into this matter than little old me. I think you might be right, Edgar. Um, we shall go have a chat. Thank you, Edgar. Sean Hampton lives and breathes for the well-being of his flock. There's no other place he would go but the docks. Let's have a chat with Good people. Good evening, Miss Halcombe. How are you tonight? I need blood, Doctor. Warm, rich, vibrant blood. Is there anything you can tell me about the recent commotion here? Many things can happen under cover of night, Doctor Reed. But I took no part in this massacre. But did you see or hear anything? I can't say I did. But the smell of fresh blood almost made me faint, Doctor. Tell me, Thelma, why do you feel so attached to Mr. Elwood? Why him? I'm... I I'm not sure, Doctor. I think we have a bond of some sort. We've both suffered so much. He's the only mortal I... I find interesting. Hmm. Do you plan to make him a vampire too? Of course not. How could I inflict my curse on anybody else? I'm not that cruel, Doctor. Would you say you and Mr. Elwood are romantically involved? No. No, Thomas is a delicate soul. Even though he disguises it. But I am not the woman he needs. No, for I am a vampire, Doctor. Tell me, Thelma. What do you really know about vampires? I saw one and he saw me. I watched him hunt and kill. I saw his terrible wounds heal as his victim died. And then I knew I was saved. You mean you actually saw a vampire? Here in London? Yes. And it has been the answer to my pain. I must drink and kill to regenerate my decaying body. I am a vampire too. Hmm. You have no idea what problems your claim could cause if heard by the wrong people, Miss Howcroft. You must stop this nonsense now. Why fear the truth? Strange things live in the dark, Dr. Reed. Strange and ancient beings that were here before this island even had a name. And I believe that. Okay, so that's I'll everything. Leave you, mistress of the dark. Okay, so I want to go speak to Thomas because they're literally like right here. Good evening, Mr. Elwood. Evening, Dr. Reed. Can you tell me anything about recent events at the hospital? Before the shouts and the noises, I think I heard whispers coming from the stairs. Two voices, maybe more. Did you recognize the voices? What did they say? I couldn't hear. Sounded like they were arguing or something. Oh, well, that's interesting. Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. Damn. The pain. What on earth happened here? Look at the state of this room. Look at that. It's a mess. Let's try and find out if there's anything else. Daily routine. Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. I'm just checking to make sure we don't have any other... No, we don't. What can you tell me about the recent events in the hospital? That Mr. Hampton 
killed Miss Jones in her room, then ran away. And did you see all this? No. I was working by the tents when it all happened. I only entered the room when they asked me to clean up the blood. Where is Miss Jones's body? I don't know. I'd imagine the morgue. It all happened so quickly. Did you see Sean Hampton leave the hospital? I think I saw a silhouette exiting the hospital gates after the shouting started. At first I thought it was someone who was just scared, but well, maybe it was him. Maybe it was. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Okay. I'm curious to what everybody has to say. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? Nothing like this would have happened if we'd had enough staff and proper shifts. So you don't think the blame is ours? We all hold fast here, Dr. Reed. Our methods may differ, but we are all trying to make a difference. Again, I believe him. Yeah, I haven't got anything there. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Good evening, Dr. Strickland. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. Can I be of any help? Can you tell me anything about the recent commotion in the hospital? I'm sure it was not your fault, Dr. Reed. My fault? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. It just... I heard it was you who brought the murderer inside our walls. But you couldn't know, could you? Goodbye, Dr. Strickland. Ah, Strickland. Oh, sweet girl. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? It's a disgrace. How on earth can patients be attacked in their own rooms? Oh, okay. Fair point. Hmm. I don't want to touch this. I'm not sure if we've spoken to Mortimer. Let's speak to Mortimer. Find Good out. evening, Mr. Goswick. How are you? I'm okay. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? I had shouting coming from the first floor. I was asleep when it started. I've read your letter, Mortimer. You wrote about an unbearable feeling of despair while the world crumbles around you. Tell me more about it. There's nothing more to say, really. It's hurtful, it's unbearable, and I don't ask anyone to understand what I feel. Oh, which one do I choose? Don't you see how lucky you are? You're rich, you're in good health, and you have a loving mother. You're simply drowning in self-pity. Leave me alone then, Doctor, and let me drown myself. That's a bit harsher than I kind of was going for, but okay. I have to go now, sir. But don't hesitate to contact me if you need any help. Good evening, sir. Good Doctor. evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? son wished to die, Beatrice. Why did you hide such crucial information? Are you not aware suicide is a crime? Mortimer could be thrown in jail. I can't let that happen. I won't. I understand you fear the legal consequences, Mrs. Goswick. But don't you realize your silence significantly affects your son's case? All my son needs is help and comprehension. Not judgment and punishment for what he may or may not have done. Do you realize your son could try to kill himself again? He might succeed next time. I think about it every minute. But I won't stop fighting for my son's future. That's how much I love him. You're right. Your son's death was not fatal. And unlike many on their own, he is lucky to have you by his side. I can't give up on him. I just can't. 
I have conceded many times in my life, but giving up on my son is something I am incapable of. Mortimer is extremely vague as to his motivations for committing suicide. Tell me more about what you know. As you say, Mortimer had no reason to die. All he said to me was that he wanted to make the world a better place. Why did your son feel so useless when facing the world? I think it was more that he could only see the melancholy facets of life. He couldn't help but dwell on such things. What do you think he meant by making the world a better place? Mortimer has always been a sensitive soul. He wouldn't talk to anyone for months after his father passed. It's like he carries everyone's sadness with him. I have read your son's suicide note. It was not an impulsive gesture, nor was it his first attempt. He threatened to kill himself a few times before. But I never thought he would dare to punish me this much. Punish you? Why? I've known for a long time he was not happy with his life. But I always hoped he cared enough to avoid making me suffer like this. It's not about you though, is it, Beatrice? That's the thing. Right, let's talk to Harvey. I will not let you down, my boy. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? Please, tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital. I heard Miss Jones call for help from her bedroom. There were some loud noises, like people fighting. All of a sudden, it went quiet. And then a nurse started screaming. Do you know who the nurse was? Not sure, but I think it was Nurse Hawkins. Okay, so we need to go find Goodbye Pepper. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. You always need words to calm the children, Helen. The Pepper only other person that I want to speak to right now other than Pippa is out here. It's locked. It never ceases to amaze me how you... Good evening, Dr. Reed. Such a pleasure to see you again. Can you tell me anything about recent events in the hospital? Oh, goodness me. This whole story is such a shame, sir. I have no idea how it happened. What are you talking about? Poor, poor Miss Jones. Her body is missing. Someone stole it. Miss Jones's body has gone missing? Yes. The body was brought here this morning, and now it's gone. Oh, so her body was brought out back and then she vanished? Ooh. Who could have stolen a corpse? That's exactly what I asked myself for the whole day. Who could do such a thing? These are terrible and shameful times, Dr. Reed. Oh. Goodbye, Mr. Hey. Chairman. Tomorrow, more bodies will arrive, and then have you departed. So I think I need to speak to everybody. Let's go. Hey, Clay. Clay, what did you see? Hey, Doc. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? All I know is I ain't letting anyone rip my throat out in my sleep. I found myself a nice play, Doc. <laughs> I'm ready. Great. I'll leave you for now, Mr. Cox. So I wonder, did they go this way? Because there's two guys down here. I need to speak to these two. I want to know if they saw anybody kind of escaping this way because I know that Sean's probably gone back to the docks, but did he go a particular way? Come on, you pair. We need to have a chat. 
Hello again, Mr. Blight. I'm happy to see Mr. Thatcher is safe for now. I'm eternally grateful, Doctor. We were total strangers and you helped us anyway. Can't thank you enough, sir. Why do you stay here now that Mr. Thatcher's back? It's complicated. Since the war, Oswald's been really nervous with the idea of entering any hospital. And me, I've got my own issues. Can you speak about them? Rats, sir. Even seeing one, they turn me. I just want to run. It's that fear that stopped me from going after Oswald when he left. What can you tell me about the war, Mr. Blight? If you want to speak about it, of course. War was... Well, you know, sir. Stench of death everywhere. Your mates lying bleeding in the mud. Just praying to make it through and get home. Bloody nightmare. Did you know Oswald Thatcher before the war? No. We met in the battlefield. I think we were in the same boat to France. We've stuck together ever since. I fought in France, too. I served as a field surgeon, but it was not uncommon to repel an assault, especially at night. Yeah. The first time I was wounded, I had to protect the infirmary from hostiles. Twice. Okay. You are always welcome at the Pembroke Hospital. As a former officer, I'll be honored to welcome a fellow veteran. I'm not giving up on bringing Oswald back to the hospital. I just need to convince him that he needs some help. Perhaps he needs to reach that decision by himself. Could you speak to him? He doesn't usually listen to doctors, but perhaps because you've been through it, you can talk him round. Maybe, but I'm not sure it works like that. What caused your phobia of rats, Newton? It happened last year following an artillery attack. I was trapped for two days in a hole under two dead soldiers. And there were rats. Go on. They started eating me as soon as I dozed. Gnawing at my ears, my fingers, lips. I couldn't move. I couldn't call for help. I see. No, you don't. You have no idea what it is to wake up buried under bodies. Fucking vermin eating your flesh. Oswald, he found me and saved me. Oh, but we do. We do, Newton. We know all about it. And it's grim. Goodbye, Mr. Blight. Take care of yourself. Good evening. Evening, Dr. Reed. Mr. Thatcher, do you have a job? No. Since I came back from the war, I spent most of my time and energy just trying to forget. I understand what you mean. I was a soldier, too. No. Nobody can truly understand what I've gone through. Yeah, but you can't understand what I've gone through. So... Why were you locked in that sewer? What happened? I went by the canal after an argument with a friend. Got chased by these fucking wankers and had to barricade myself in, despite my claustrophobia. Why did you run? What was the reason for your argument? Newton wanted me to go to a hospital, but I can't stand being closed in. It makes me feel like I'm suffocating. Tell me about your claustrophobia. Has anyone given you an official diagnosis? <sighs> That's what the bloody doctors said. But I don't want to go to a hospital to get checked again. I'll deal with it my own way. Okay. Oswald, why did you not go to the Pembroke Hospital to seek medical help? I don't trust doctors. All they care about is their careers and processes. I won't be locked in any room again by anyone. Your fear of being trapped is not going to go away by itself. You need professional help. I've seen enough butchers in white coats to last a lifetime. Hospitals reek of chemicals and death. What I need is fresh air. Okay, you say so. Do you want to talk about why you have this fear of being enclosed, Mr. Thatcher? No, I really don't. 
An irrational fear like yours is usually rooted in a specific event. Perhaps it would help to talk about it. Well, Doctor, take a guess then, if you're so interested in my case. When I rescued you, you expressed joy at seeing the sky again. So I'm inclined to believe you were trapped or buried somehow. Maybe during a shelling. Jeez, you're good, Doc. You're really good. Go on, please. Tell me more about it. You and I were trapped in a circulation tunnel after an artillery attack. We were buried alive for several days without ever knowing if we'd be found. Oswald, tell me about what happened when you were buried in that tunnel with Newton. It was more than dark. It was black as pitch. Hours seemed like days, and days like months. But the terror, the shameful thoughts. Lord have mercy. What you endured was terrifying. It would have completely destroyed weaker men. It did not destroy Newton. Shameful thoughts. Tell me about them. At some point, I don't remember which day, when I thought we'd never be rescued, that this would be our end. I thought, I thought about, I thought about. <laughs> say it, Mr. Thatcher. If you ever want to heal, you have to say it. Yeah, I thought about what I could do to survive, just for a few more days. Killing you. Killing and eating him. The man I fucking love. Tell me about your true feelings for Newton. I love him. I'm not ashamed to say it. He's the best thing that ever happened to me. I can't imagine life without him. I admire your honesty. It takes courage to stand up to society. The world needs people like you to create change. Courage is what we needed in the trenches, looking death in the face every day. I speak plain. I speak my mind. Have you always been this straightforward? All I know is, before you saved me by the sewer, my only regret was I wouldn't be able to hold or kiss Newton again. I love him, that's all. Why should you be ashamed? I'm not, I said. But Newton sees it different. Okay, good Goodbye, talk. Mr. Thatcher. Try to take care of yourself. So, um, they didn't have anything relating to Sean or Harriet. So, I'm assuming they did not come down this way. Which is fine. So, we should have... Ah, Tippett's... Ah, uh, Tippett's, come here. Don't run away. Good evening, Dr. Tippett. Dr. Reed, any good news to share? No. Can you tell me anything about the recent commotion in the hospital? It's a tragedy, pure and simple. The hospital is meant to be a safe haven to all. We failed the people who trusted us with their care. Do you think I should not have brought Mr. Hampton back here? It's not your fault. You rescued that poor soul. It was the Christian thing to do. But we should have noticed his instability. That's a valid point. Um, though the Christianity bit, maybe not. Goodbye, Dr. Tippett. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? Someone killed Miss Jones in her room. And Mr. Hampton's gone missing. Doesn't take a genius to piece it together. You don't seem shocked by any of this. Why should I be? Whoever did this must be long gone by now. And besides, he got rid of the old bag. <laughs> oh gosh, Milton. Goodbye, Milton. Right. We need to find Nurse Hawkins, and then we'll come back and we'll speak to Lady Ashbury last. Ah, there she is. Hey, Nurse Hawkins. Good okay. evening, Nurse Hawkins. Good evening, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about the recent commotion in the hospital? Everybody's afraid. Death has always been a frequent visitor. But murder? How can we cope with that? As a nurse at this hospital, it is your duty to deal with these things as best you can. Yeah. Until it's my turn to have blood spread all over the walls. I entered the room first, Dr. Reed. 
I've seen what that monster did to the woman. Goodbye. Okay. God, look at that. That's just grim. Oh, Jonathan. I cannot believe my eyes. Poor woman. Butchered by some savage scowl. Yes. And I'm afraid I'm at least partially responsible. The man, the scowl, I brought him here. Jonathan. How could you say such a thing? Forgive me if I feel despondent. For there seems to be no end to the suffering and death that surrounds us. I'm always here for you, Jonathan. I really hate that this question is here because I don't think she did. Have you embraced this woman like the other patient, this Mr. Renfield? Her name was Amelia. And no, I did not kill her. I vowed a very long time ago that I would never take another life unless they ask. Oh, okay. So now that tells us a little bit more about her because initially when we kind of came back from the blackmail in the hospital quest, we found her um, embracing then uh, Mr. Rainfield in the other tent. And yeah, she didn't really say much about it other than she only feeds off the dying. But now she said that she asks them. And so, yeah, they are making a decision. So I'm kind of warming to her even more. But then surely the blood quality of the sick is not great. Is there sufficient vitality in the blood of the sick and dying patients? Yes, Jonathan. The hunger gnaws at me every waking hour. Frankly, I'm starving. Okay, so what I get from that is that, yes, there's enough vitality, but it does not completely satiate the hunger. So he's still starving. It doesn't give her the full, you know, the, com the feeling of being full. So, yeah. So isn't the rich blood of, like, healthy people more appealing to her? Temptation surrounds us. Rich, vital. How can you resist? Over the years, any pleasure I once gleaned from feeding is long gone. I drink for sustenance. And though I still thirst for more, I restrain myself. I have experienced a certain difficulty when faced with holy symbols or trying to enter religious buildings. Have you? Now that's quite a question. I don't know why, but yes, it has happened to me. Is this a sign? The hand of God in action. Are we repellent unto heaven? I don't have the answers, Jonathan. But I believe superstition and magic is just fact awaiting the lens of science. Aren't you frightened? Very little scares me, my dear. To be compelled to avoid symbols of faith does not concern me. Fair point. What do you know of Ascalon? I was threatened by a creature, a vampire in Whitechapel, stating I had to obey the law of conduct. What more can you tell me about him? He was huge. He was bigger than a man. Huge, in fact. He seemed to radiate violence. I thought he was going to tear me apart. Then he vanished. Fergal, the executioner of Ascalon. You were fortunate he was not after you but rather outdoing his master's bidding. So what's Ascalon? What is Ascalon? The Ascalon Club are the most powerful vampires in Britain and exert tremendous influence. 
Take my advice and stay well away. Yeah, I will definitely take your advice. Thank you, my lady. I hope to see you again soon. Love those boots. Want those. Okay. So, um, I'm just thinking to myself because a lot has happened. You know, it's kind of like Harriet. Her body was found, taken to the mortuary, vanished from the mortuary, but then Thomas said he heard somebody arguing, maybe on the first floor, by the stairs. Um, yeah. Then you have uh, Nurse Brannigan that says that um, she saw a figure leaving the hospital, but only one. And then we have Amelia, that another patient that's obviously being brutally murdered here. And Lady Ashbury wasn't involved. So, wow, did Sean really create this much chaos? I'm just, yeah, wow. That's a bit crazy. So what we'll do is we'll head, try to get over to the docks in this episode. Um, we are almost towards the hour mark, so let's see how far we can get. It seems the Prewin are redoubling their patrols in the district. I must be more careful. Oh, that went better than I thought it would. So see, this is what I meant about like bodies just being picked up and like thrown onto wagons. here I want this guy because they throw grenades Alright, so I need to think a bit strategically with this one because we've got a flamethrower, well, gas guy, bolt, and fire. And we've got this guy. I think we take out this guy first. That tidies up that bit. Oh! 
Yes, mate, they're dead. You're on your own. have a go at this one actually we're in the area this could absolutely come back and bite me badly but we'll give it a go Okay, that went well. I'm very happy with that. Oh. Wow, so he's after medicinal opium. Sodium hypochlorite and potassium permanganate, we get like all of them. But medical opium? That's like really pure. Opium is one of the main ingredients of Strickland's medication. Never a good move. Ooh. Okay, so we are in the dock area now, guys. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, in here a second. I'm going to get to the safe house. And when we get to the safe house, I will um, call it the episode. So it'll be probably slightly over an hour. Cover letter. Hello, Frank. How are you, my old friend? It was good to see you last week. Next time, let me get the rounds in. I hope everything's okay on your side of town. Here in your old neighborhood, the situation is getting worse. Play is getting more violent every day and is only thinking about expansion, even when it seems there are some new players around trying to dispute our territory. The wet boot boys are in a bad spot, I'm afraid, so I thought about what you said last time we met, that you never regretted leaving the gang and that only... The only thing you regret is never being able to put your foot in the East End again. To avoid a good beating or worse. Well, rest assured that you'd have my protection if you decided to pass by. And maybe we could talk again about new opportunities and job offers. I know I have always been a good... You know I have always been good with numbers. So maybe if you need an accountant in your company. Let's talk about that, shall we? Say hello to your wife for me. Wet boot boy for life, old chap. Ruth Digby.
Actually, let's make some... Look at that. Because I used one. All right, folks, so I am going to call the episode here and we'll continue next time with finding out where Sean Hampton actually is and uh, we'll try to get through as much of that as possible. I anticipate there'll be quite a lot of talking in the next episode just like this one, but that's the way this game works and I love it. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate you stopping by and taking the time out of your busy day to just watch my videos. If you did enjoy it, please consider liking and subscribing and maybe leaving a comment. That really helps me and helps the channel grow. And thanks again if you've already subscribed and you've already done all those things, I really appreciate it. I'll also leave the links to my other socials and also to my Twitch channel because I do sometimes live stream and it would be lovely to see you there uh, and chat in person. So uh, thanks for your time and I will see you in the next episode.